So back when I was on macOS, I used to use this app called Fuzzy Clock, and it will tell you the time. You can see it like right here. And it tells you the time uh, like a human would actually tell you the time. So instead of saying it's 9.43, it'll say it's quarter to 10, something like that. I always thought that was pretty cool. Recently, I decided I want to do the same thing on Linux, but Polybar, the bar that I use up here, uh, it didn't have one available to me. So I decided to build one and you can see I have it working. So spoiler, this, this is going to work. Uh, I wouldn't make the video if it didn't. Okay, so here's my fuzzy clock. And now your first question might be, what, what is the point of this? So really the point of it is I think it looks kind of cool. Um, but some people actually say it's less distracting to have a clock like this that doesn't update every minute. So you're not looking at the exact minute every time. It just kind of tells you roughly what time it is. I don't know if that's actually true, uh, but I do think it looks cool. So that's why I built it. Okay, so I'm going to show you the code. Uh, I'm not a bash expert, of course. So uh, if you can tell me how to improve it, always look and learn. So it's pretty simple. Uh, we're starting off with a bash array. Yeah, bash has arrays. I This is, I think, my first time actually ever using one. So uh, in the array, I have all the hours that uh, one would expect. I also have the hour zero here, which you would not expect. But I want my uh, bash arrays are zero indexed, fortunately. right? So I want to have my zero right here. Next, uh, what am I doing? I'm shelling out to date. So date is an application uh, that you can use. Uh, that I'm sure it's installed on your Unix system and it's going to give you a date like this But if you pass it special parameters, it'll return that date uh, formatted for you. So if I do date plus and then uh, let's see percent I Like that it's gonna say 12 because currently it is uh, 12 o'clock um, It's actually not it's actually 5 to 1, but it's 1255 or something like that Okay, so the first thing I'm doing here is I'm getting the hour and the minute. So the actual time right now for me is 12.56. So I'm getting 12 and then uh, 56, something like that. Okay, this next part is, is kind of confusing. So sometimes you're going to end up with uh, an hour like this or a minute like that. And uh, this can be really confusing to bash because it thinks that you're I think it thinks you're using some some other base number system. I think it might be octal. I'm not I'm not sure. So the next step here is we're just saying, hey, treat this as if it is a uh, base ten, if it's as if it's a decimal. And what that does effectively is it strips out any leading zeros. Okay, great. Next, we have to decide are we going to talk about the current hour or the next hour? So you've probably never really thought about it, but as soon as we're about uh, you know 33 minutes after the hour, uh, then we actually start talking about the next hour. So I'll say it's nine o'clock, it's 9.10, it's half past nine, right? Or I might say it's 9.30, but I'm not gonna say it's 35 past nine. I'm gonna say it's 25 to 10. So it's right around 33 minutes. That's, uh, that's where we start making the switch there. The next thing I do is I grab the hours from the hour array. So if we have the number three, I'll go grab the index three. So zero, one, two, three right here. And uh, that's the, the time. So now I know that I'm dealing with the hour three, right? So three o'clock. So first thing, if it's if the minute is less than three, I'm gonna say that it's three o'clock. But as soon as it's not less than three, right? So if it's between three and eight, uh, I'm gonna say it's five after. So it's not exactly five after, but it's what you would say to somebody uh, if they asked you what time it is. You wouldn't say it's 3.04, you would say it's five after three. The rest of this is just a giant uh, if else if uh, block and uh, really not elegant gets the job done. I, I'm interested to see is there a better way of doing this this in Bash. Um, I might do something like a case statement if I was doing this in JavaScript. Um, maybe not. I don't know. Anyway, I'm interested to see if you have a better way of, of going about this. And then uh, if we actually hit this, I want to exit with an error code because something's broken. And then last, I just echo it out. So um, that's that's all this whole thing does. So if I try and run it, fuzzy clock, it's gonna tell me that it's just gonna echo out a string. So uh, I've actually added it to my path, which will be important in a second here. Okay, so now how do I actually get this up into my uh, poly bar, right? So you can see it's up there, it says one o'clock. How do I get that into my poly bar? So uh, I thought that might be hard. It's actually really easy. So I'm gonna go into poly bar, bar config here, uh, dot config poly bar and uh, I'm using a poly bar that I grabbed somewhere off the internet and I've just started to modify. What I've had to do is create a user module. So I'm gonna go into my user module. Let me look for fuzzy. And uh, this is my entire module, these three lines of code. So I'm saying the module, it's a module and it's called fuzzy clock, the type. So it's a custom or script type. 
and then to execute it, you run fuzzy clock. So there's more options that you can actually put into this, but this is simple enough for me. So this tells Polybar um, that this is a script that you're gonna run, and here's how you execute it. Uh, again, this is my path, so it can execute it, no problem. So all it is doing is it's calling uh, that script, and then it's throwing the result up there uh, into my Polybar. That's all there is to it. So uh, I hope you learned something and I hope you can teach me something about how I could be doing this better. Or maybe if you've already built something like this and you've got improvements, I'd love to hear about them. Okay, cool. Talk to you next time.